great. Um, so yeah, I've got another 15 minute block here. I'm gonna be chatting through um, our 2024 data challenge, uh, which is gonna be held on Kaggle. Um, and also I'm gonna give you a little bit of an update on some of the results from last year, which was uh, the first year that we did this, this challenge. Um, I'm going to be giving these slides on behalf of Eric Orenstein, who is the other FathomNet co-lead. He couldn't be here today, um, and I'll do my best to answer any questions. But uh, if I can't answer them, I'll, I'll relay them over to, to Eric and get back to you. All right, so starting off with last year's competition, uh, we ran FathomNet 2023, which was titled Shifting Seas, Shifting Species, Out of Sample Detection in the Deep Ocean. Uh, this was hosted, as Kakani said, as part of the fine-grained visual categorization FGDC uh, workshop, which was held as part of the computer vision and pattern recognition workshop or conference, sorry, uh, in Vancouver, uh, which was uh, June of last year. Um, <clears throat> so the the challenge ran from about uh, you know end of March until you know, end of May, uh, which is similar timeline that we're targeting for this year. Just a heads up. Um, and it was run on a platform called Kaggle, which is a great platform for organizing these kinds of competitions, allows you to you know, upload different uh, solutions, see the challenge, download data sets, have conversations, uh, things of that nature. Um, so, you know, th that problem last year in particular was this question of out of distribution detection, right? Our problem setting was we had you know, a large number, 290 categories of near bottom dwelling animals uh, from the Monterey Bay. And we provided a training data set, which was about 6,000 images and uh, you know, around 20,000, I believe, uh, bounding box annotations that ranged um, from zero to 800 meters. Right? These images were taken by ROVs in, in Monterey Bay. Um, and then you know, we gave everybody uh, this, this training data kind of as a starting point to say, hey, here are a bunch of images of this target distribution of data that, uh, that we have, right? Um, within the Monterey Bay. Um, but then the, the challenge was, uh, you know, we were giving an evaluation data set of imagery collected by ROV in the same areas from zero to 1300 meters, right? So you had this, this overlap uh, of the, uh, the species distribution and the image, uh, you know, sort of quality distribution, um, but there was this 800 to 1300 meter gap, uh, or sorry, uh, this, this range in the evaluation data that we were testing on that was not included in the uh, the distribution of the training data, right? And so our, our challenge was really, can you identify these images that came from this 800 to 1300 meter bin versus ones that were from uh, included in the training data, right? Zero to 800 meters. Uh, if you're curious, you can check out more details on uh, on this uh, this challenge and the data set that we put together for it. Uh, it's on archive, so you can be, uh, you know go to that link at the bottom there. Right, so um, we had you know a, a great great turnout for this workshop. We felt uh, it went really successfully. Um, again, we we hosted it as part of FGBC and it ran for those few months. Uh, we had a total of eighty six different participants representing twenty five different countries. So we we're really happy to see that uh, a lot of engagement from the FathomNet community as well as sort of the wider data science community. Uh, people who are on Kaggle and looking for these kinds of competitions were were engaging with uh, the, the the challenge and really helping us to. Uh, see how people coming into FathomNet would use the different tools within the ecosystem in order to get at the data and uh, also try out a few different uh, you know, new machine learning techniques to see if they could get the best possible performance. So we were really happy with the results. Uh, we trained a baseline model to see you know, what, what we could accomplish just using the uh, training data set as is. Um, and you can see that in the blue line here. But it was great to see our, you know, the first place team got a big improvement on the performance. Uh, by the way, the better performance on this graph, which is a true positive to false positive rate um, graph, is you know things that get closer up to that uh, that upper left corner, right? So you know the ideal would be vertical line than, than horizontal line there. Um, but yeah, we were able to see an improvement on the baseline performance. Um, I won't get into you know all the different techniques that they uh, that they went into, but they they tried a bunch of different things and. Uh, we we're able to see on Kaggle a lot of uh, the the different techniques that people were trying out um, through these these Python notebooks that you can just spin up and then run yourself, reproduce. But yeah, so you know we we had great results out of this uh, challenge and we decided to run it again this year. So this year, our challenge is uh, detecting the unknown: novel category discovery in the deep sea. This is again going to be hosted as part of uh, FGVC at CBPR. And 
uh, you know, this is our, our second annual one, right? We're uh, in that we're, we're hoping to, to keep this going. Um, so yeah, so uh, feel free to, to join in this, this competition. Um, this challenge in particular, I'll, I'll talk about it briefly here, is novel category discovery. And at its core is this question of how do you get a computer or a machine learning algorithm um, to flag an object as unknown? What this is really getting at is this question of a closed versus open set or an open world uh, in object detection, right? So a closed world is really the scenario where you have, uh, you know, very commonly, this is sort of the default in many cases, you train a machine learning model to look for the classes that you're interested in, right? So let's say we have five classes, you know, fish, squids, worms, urchins, corals, and we're interested in deploying a machine learning algorithm on, on Im images that, you know, include these but the real world is messy, right? So you go ahead, you get this picture um, and you know you, you say, okay, machine learning model, what do you see? It says, okay, we've got a squid there. Great, right? And we've got a worm over there, uh oh, right? Um, so, you know, backing up for a second, we, we know, you know, we have fish, squid, worm, urchin, coral. So this, this machine learning model is seeing two things and, and you know, classifying um, you know, that, that uh, siphonophore, I believe, at the, the bottom right as, oh, not a siphonophore, uh-oh. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble with Kikani. <laughs> um, well, as as a worm, right? Uh, and I don't believe it's a worm. Um, probably should have cross-referenced this, but uh, right, so the uh, the uh, the flip side of this this closed world is, is an open world, of course, right? So, you know, how can you train an algorithm to look for some set of classes that you do know, right? And you have a lot of training data for, and then also be able to say when it doesn't, when it sees something that's interesting, but it doesn't know what it is, right? So in some sense, you have six classes, right? You have fish, squid, worm, urchin, coral, and then unknown, right? So what this problem shifts to is, okay, we see a squid, great. But then, you know, we see this other thing, it seems interesting, but it is unknown. And truthfully, I am that model, it is unknown to me. Right. Um, so, you know, this is this is the challenge. Uh, we're still sort of shaping it up. Uh, it's going to be put on Kaggle again this year. Uh, we had good success on that platform. Uh, and, our, you know, our time range is similar April 1st through uh, June 5th. Um, we're pu pulling together the data set for this right now, but we're uh, hoping that it'll be a lot larger with 25,000 images, around 70,000 localizations. And then we're going to be grouping a lot of these uh, you know, fine grained labels into larger super categories. So we'll have 20 super categories that we're gonna uh, be targeting for this, this challenge. Okay, and that's everything I have. Um, so still have a few minutes left. Uh, happy to take any questions or again, lay them over to Eric. Plenty of time. We're getting, we're at, we have guesses in the, in the comments around what that was. Awesome. We don't need all these machine learning models. We just need more no. workshops. <laughs> but the sad part is we don't have experts on like our phone, a friend or whatever all the time, right? To answer these questions for us. So exactly. I was going to say, I've been told a vampire squid is not a squid. <laughs> so it's a whole nother thing. <laughs> uh, so... There is a question here about, uh, could you go over the contribution of the Kaggle winner? Um, yeah, okay. Let me pull that slide back up here. Right, okay, so yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the notes that I have here from Eric um, is that the winning team used, um, so they queried images for categories using text-based, the, the text-based species description. And in particular, they were including uh, data from outside of uh, FathomNet. So I think they were using some other um, training data sets in order to augment that model. Um, you know, otherwise you know, the, the other teams weren't actually trying to retrieve those other labels. Um, also, I see, yeah, they, they evenly split between object detection and multi-label classification models um, to get labels for OSD prediction. Um, and yeah, but so yeah, I'm a little fuzzy on the details uh, myself, but I can send you the link to uh, the team that did end up winning, and then they have a, a lot more documentation on, on what they did. 
And I vaguely remember um, maybe it was Eric who put together kind of a, a summary or description of of the Kaggle competition and, and how it went and the outcomes. I, am I misremembering? Is that the archive paper? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We submitted a paper describing that in the archive. <laughs> Let me try and find it. Yeah, I've got it in the, in the slides here. I'll paste the link in the chat. Oh, perfect. Yeah, and then I'll also get the uh, the link for the Kaggle competition in particular. Yeah, I want to say, you know, we're very, very fortunate and grateful to the, the fine grain visual categorization workshop community because this is something that they host every year um, and do so uh, without cost to the people that are, are doing the, the data competitions. And so while we're hoping, right, this is going to be an annual thing, it, it's really because of that community we've been able to do these, these competitions. Um, so we're really grateful for that um, partnership and also trying to continue uh, working with these experts, right, in computer vision.